Hi, I'm Scott from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and today I'm going to show you how to measure things within ZBrush. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got ZBrush booted up, and the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in a subtool. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here to bring in something easy to measure. Uh, we're going to start with a Cube 3D. So I'm going to click on that, click and drag to bring it in, and immediately hit the T key to go into edit mode. I'm also going to make this a PolyMesh 3D. Now, the way ZBrush works is that when you bring in a subtool, it will always be uh, pretty much the same size. Now, to know what size this subtool is, we navigate over to our geometry palette and go down to size right here. So currently this cube is two by two by two units. Now the units within ZBrush is a measuring device which we can assign our own real world units to later. We can actually use these values to resize a subtool really quickly. So uh, I can uh, in this XYZ box, I can click in on the number, key in, let's say, 3, and it automatically adjusts. Now, don't be alarmed if uh, when you see this kind of stuff, uh, 2.99999, uh, that's just ZBrush uh, and the way it does measurements. But uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, this, was, this is uh, a three-unit cube. If we want to actually measure this ourselves, the way we do that is we're going to go into either move, scale, or rotate to bring up our Gizmo 3D. And then we're going to click on this box here and turn off the Gizmo 3D uh, and go back to the old transpose line. Now this is going to be our ruler in ZBrush. Now, you can see as I move my cursor around, my that little red dot is snapping to certain grid points. And I'll turn on my polyframe so you can see it a little better. So it will automatically snap to certain grid points. Now to measure, I'm going to snap it over here to the corner. And I'm going to left click and drag. Now as I'm dragging this out, I can move it at any angle I want or I can hold shift and it will snap to certain degrees. So I'm gonna keep this flat, I'm gonna hold shift, and I'm gonna to snap to this outside corner here and then release. Now you'll see up here on the top left, that's where the unit measurement is going to be displayed. Uh, so 2.99999 or you know, basically three units. Now, if we want to assign a real-world measurement to this, the way we do that is we go up to Z plugin up here at the top and open up the 3D print hub. Uh, inside is a button called update size ratios and when I click on that it will look at these units here and ask us what what measurement these are. So Here's my, my three by three by three, and it's asking if that's in inches or in millimeters. Now, it's got two measurements here. These are the same measurements. Uh, so 76.2 millimeters is the same as three inches, uh, and it's the same over here. So in jewelry, most of the time we're working in millimeters, uh, so I would just go ahead and click on millimeters. And now uh, when I export this for 3D printing, it'll translate this file as a file that was built in millimeters. Now after updating the size ratios, um, let's take another quick measurement. So we're, we're going to do down here on the bottom here. So I'm going to snap to this corner, left click and drag, holding shift, snap to that corner and you'll see I'm still at 2.9999 units. Now there's a way to change what this displays because we know that we're going to be using millimeters in our jewelry design more often than not for things like 
prongs and shank thicknesses and, and so forth. So if I want to change what that says up at the top, I can, I can go to Preferences up here at the top of the screen and go to Transpose Units and then click on Set Units. And now I can type in millimeters, hit enter, and now my measurements will show up as three millimeters or 2.9999. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's one thing you can do right off the bat. Um, just an FYI, uh, if if you're inputting a size of a subtool at the beginning into this box, and you find that when you go to measure something the measurement is different. Uh, you can go back into your preferences. There is a calibration distance here. So what you can do is, let's say, uh, you know, my, my box here is uh, a three unit box and I put this transpose tool from corner to corner uh, and this measurement should be three units. Then I can go into preferences, I can type three units into this calibration distance and that will calibrate this transpose tool. So in certain instances uh, there will be times when you don't have these nice corners to grab onto. So I'm actually going to bring out a different subtool. I'm going to bring out a sphere and I'm going to make polymesh 3D and I'm actually going to subdivide it a few times. Let's turn off polyframes and then... So I've got a lot of geometry. I mean, it's snapping to a whole bunch of points in there. But I can still use my transpose line to measure. So I go back up to either move scale or rotate, click on one of those, make sure my gizmo 3D is turned off, and now I can look where that red dot is. You can just barely see it kind of pop onto the sphere as I mouse over. And then I'm going to click and drag, hold shift, and now I want to try to line up the other end right in the middle of this little orange circle that's around my cursor. And my measurement comes out to 1.9916. Now our actual sphere is about 1.9999. Uh, so that's pretty close. Uh, in certain cases, you will your measurement won't be completely identical to what you have in the size box here, but it's close enough to make that inference that yes, this is a two millimeter sphere. Now we'll use the transpose tool a lot with things like rings, for instance. Uh, when you have items like uh, pendants or say a brooch um, those are a little easier because if, if you noticed when we went up to our Z plugins and into the 3d print hub and we did our update size ratios these numbers are only looking at the entire outside of our our subtool or you know what whatever we've sculpted so if we have to measure individual items within that that piece that's where this transpose line is going to be uh, beneficial and I'll show you an example so I'm going to open up my subtools again and I'm actually going to bring in the ring 3d uh, and again going to make polymesh 3d now when I go into uh, size here and take a look at it so it's saying that uh, it's about 2 by 2 by 0.4 units. So uh, 0.4 being the width here. But we need to know what this measurement is on the inside because if we just go to update size ratios we're just gonna see these same numbers here. It's just looking at the total uh, outside dimension. So we can use our transpose tool uh, and let me bring it back up. I just go into the move option there and then kind of snap onto the inside surface, click and drag, hold shift, and then snap it to the other side. So 
In this instance, we don't have this ring sized up to an actual ring size, but at least this way, it's reading about 1.2 millimeters. This way we know what this measurement is on the inside, uh, so we can make sure that our ring sizes are, are gonna be right. And this will, this will make it much easier to bring stuff into your 3D printing software uh, and not have to make any kind of scaling changes or, or anything like that. Okay, and lastly, this is more of just a quick tip. So when you're, when you're using the subtools that are within ZBrush, uh, there's, there's usually not any sizing issues with those, but I'll, I'll give you one instance where uh, you may run into some sizing issues, and that's when you're creating something in another piece of software and bringing it into ZBrush uh, so you can start sculpting on it. So say you're using something like like two shapes or three design uh, to make kind of a basic ring and then bring it in here to do some some sculpting on it. Now if you start using this transpose tool uh, to take measurements and they seem to be way way off. Uh, what you can do is make sure to check your calibration distance here. So check the overall size of your model here under size and then do a kind of outside measurement of it and check your calibration distance just to make sure that your transpose line is calibrated properly in most cases it will be but uh, it is one thing to check uh, but the other thing to check is uh, i'm going to close the geometry palette and i'm going to go down here to export so in here is a uh, scaling. Now this could actually affect the measurement of your, your model without you knowing it. So make sure that if, if you do a, a update size ratio within the 3D print hub or you're doing a transpose measurement, uh, take a look at this just to make sure that your scale is at one and all of these offsets are at zero because that could have a drastic effect on what the measurements actually come out as. And basically what it does is, um, let's say that, you know, I put 10 under scale and I just did the same measurement so if I go back into geometry, all my sizes here are still the same, but my export scaling is at 10. Now you'll see I measured the inside of this ring shank again, and it was 1.2 millimeters uh, according to ZBrush, and now it's sitting at 12. So you can get some funky results, and you can see how that when I click the update size ratios, what that did. So even though my sizing, you know, over in my geometry palette is still showing the same values, these values are way off. So just make sure to check that if uh, if you're bringing stuff in from other CAD softwares. Just uh, take a quick peek in here and make sure that that scaling is just fine. Now the actual measurements haven't changed. All it did was it took this measurement, which was 1.2, and it multiplies it by whatever this number is here. So even if you were to export it in that way and bring it into your um, 3D printing software, uh, it's going to be the right size. It's just, it's more disconcerting to, to see that the measurement is so far off. So that's more of just a quick tip. Uh, just something to watch out for if you find your measurements are wildly off. Uh, but that's pretty much it uh, for measuring things within ZBrush. It's a bit more of a roundabout way than other types of CAD software, but it is possible to measure things precisely within ZBrush. Uh, so if you have any questions, always feel free to contact us.